YouTube, it is me, Anne Affella, channel here, and today I'm going to be doing my review of the Justice League movie. The characters I really, really, really liked were Aquaman, for he was brilliantly acted, and Barry Allen, The Flash, awesome, awesome additions, brilliant, they can come back. Wonder Woman was brilliant and on par, Batman was his usual emo self, yes, Superman, Though he was dead, he got brought back to life. Spoiler warning, yeah. Um, brilliantly, brilliantly played. Cyborg, oh, he was a wonderful character, but he was boring. And that's the big problem with the Justice League, is they, they're boring and they shouldn't be boring. Barry Allen, Aquaman, brilliant, they brought life to it. Wonder Woman brought some life to it. Good kick-ass scene at the beginning there, I loved it. But... Batman's not a leader. He can't lead that team. He's so, I'm so emo-y. And I mean, if Aquaman knows the guy's insane, come on. Superman has to lead that team. I'm looking forward to the next Justice League film where Superman's going to lead it. Because Batman just can't lead. He relies on Wonder Woman. He just hasn't got that thing. He's just, ugh, I'm, I'm like Amanda Waller. I'm just dark, basically. Um, I love the end credit scene, the best scene there. I'm loving the fact Superman comes alive, Amanda Waller lets Lex Luthor out. Come on, you know it's Amanda Waller who lets Lex Luthor out because they've got a thing, Lex Luthor is in love with Amanda Waller. Sorry, spoilers, it's in the comics. And I'm loving the fact that we got to see Deathstroke. It's going to be awesome. Yay! And I want to see the Joker actually at the first Under Justice League and blow it all up and just be like, yay, we've got to have chaos, people. The, the, that's what I want. Um, Overall, the Mother Buck storyline was boring. Overuse of CGI, didn't feel connected to the villain. But I love seeing Hippolyta and all the Amazons again. And I love seeing um, the Aqua people. And I loved seeing, weirdly enough, the Green Lantern Corps in that wonderful flashback. So they're going to come. Please, not Hal Jordan. Please, not that Green Lantern. Pick somebody else. There's loads of them. So, that is interesting. But I do feel that Justice League was basically two movies squidged into one. It had some good elements. It had a decent enough plot. Though the whole mother box thing was like... But this is the problem with DC. DC takes gods and makes them human. Marvel takes people who are already gods takes humans and makes them human. So DC takes gods and we find the humanity within them. Marvel takes ordinary humans and makes them gods, which means that there's more arc to their character development. It's really difficult making powerful people human or appear to be human or weak because then you go, oh, these characters are all really weak. Look, the Joker relies on Harley Quinn and really loves her. Oh, Harley Quinn's codependent with the Joker. Oh, Wonder Woman's really weak because she's in love with Steve Trevor. Batman's an emotional mess. It's very difficult to do, but this is something that Marvel has got really good plots. X-Men is just awesomely plotted, but the Avengers have got brilliant plots. DC have got these overall archetypical characters that are so big and so difficult to put into a plot. The fact is, if you just had Batman, Harley Quinn and the Joker... That would make a beautiful movie and possibly Robin and obviously Alfred and um, James Gordon. Six characters, that all that is all you need. Three leads and three supporters. Any more than that and DC becomes overcrowded with these powerful people. That being said, I love the fact that we got to see all of Superman's powers. The frost breath, the laser eyes, the flying, the whacking of Wonder Woman in the face. That did make me a little bit uncomfortable but then again violence against women does but it also shows how powerful Superman is compared to, you know, Daughter of Zeus. So that's interesting in itself, liked that. I'm liking the fact that everybody acknowledges Batman's insanity, which is a step forward. Jeremy Irons as Alfred was awesome. There were some really, really good elements in there. DC is well on the way to developing some great stuff, but they've got to be allowed to do it. And yes, DC does spend a lot of time debating ethics. Sorry, that's why it's the more grown-up series compared to Marvel. Marvel doesn't have the ethical questions. I love in the fact that one woman was like, but should we do this? Is this what Clark would want to come back? Really? 
and it's interesting people don't get the whole batman versus superman thing they don't understand it and it's the fact that batman is saying i'm human superman is not he's the most powerful being how can we take him down if he get, he's gone rogue but he's not gone rogue yet so why do we need to have this argument that's what a logical person would say but batman ain't logical he's crazy cuckoo bananas just so you know but he wants to show people that superman can be defeated so he's kind of got this weird amanda waller complex going on with superheroes because amanda waller she values them but she also knows that they're a threat and it was interesting um in suicide squad film she said superman's dead and you're acting like the cat who ate the canary and she said superman was all right because he bought into our values and way of life and he supported them some of the other metahumans don't and they're dangerous and i mean some of them are just sort of like you know a nuisance to society but some of them are deadly and dangerous and what do we do about that and which is the same question that batman was asking in batman versus superman what do we do if we come across somebody who's so powerful but wants to destroy everything so Overall, I'm going to give Justice League a three and a half for trying. Um, the characterisation is always spot on in DC. It's just that they have really weak plots. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Yes, Darkseid did get a mention, but we don't really kind of understand Darkseid. Or at least the people who don't read the comics, uh, the people who haven't read the comic material don't get it. And that's a big problem with DC is it's got 75 years of comic material to get through, you know. It's taken till 2016 to get Harley Quinn up on the screen, for goodness sake. And to get a Joker that works with Harley Quinn on the screen. Oh, boy. So, it's going to be interesting to see where DC goes. Justice League made a decent profit and did have okay critical reception. Bit too reliant on the CGI and what on earth was going on with Superman's moustache or lip. That was just nuts. Just get some dots and follow it. They should have just stuck dots on it. You know, if if Harry Potter can diminish Ray Fine's nose by having darts, I'm sure they could have tracked his head a whole lot better. Anyway, um, so I think Justice League has set up the DCU really well, if um, anything. What I really would like to see is a movie where the, you have the Suicide Squad, the Justice League, Justice League of America and the Anti-Justice League involved and see how Amanda Waller manipulates everything. Because that's basically what she does. She's the most powerful character in DC. Sorry, but it's true. Um, and she uses Batman for her own ends. Um, which is why it's crazy. Um, so, overall, three and a half. Good effort, but weak plot. So, if you've enjoyed this review, please like, comment and subscribe. And I'm sorry it's late, but that's the way life goes.